the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I want to go ahead and give you a quick uh, uh, synopsis of what we talked about today. And I, and I, I changed the topic because I've started off with the kind of topic called to be two types of churches, the those that obey Christ and those that disobey Christ. And I changed it more to line up with the scriptures so that people, if they're going to discuss it and debate it, they can at least line up with what scripture I'm coming from. And I'm coming from Romans chapter 8. I'm talking about verse 6. We're talking about being being caught in the mind of spiritual light. So this is what I want to do, and and because what I've seen so much, and I think most of them agree now, we have become so comfortable. You know, I can't say we have, because I see based on history that we have done card we've been acting on the cardinal flesh and cardinal reality for a very long time. But it's called two types of Christians, spiritual minded and cardinal minded. That verse that goes to that is Romans 8, 6. So when you talk to your pastor and you talk to your minister, you talk to your fellow believers, you ask you, you what I want you to do is assess whether you are cardinal. Are you cardinal Christians? And then what I do encourage you to do, what we talked about today was Google, go do word search, go to the library, have you want to say, look up the atrocities first of religion, religious people or religion and how much religion has uh, driven people to do mass killing and murders and torture and some very inhumane things. And then if you want to talk about the, the, the our Christianity itself, then you go and look up look up the atrocities of Christians and you'll see that we, we got to, and you know it, starting from the crusade all the way to the transatlantic slave trade, all the way to the slavery all the way through the Jim Crow laws and all those things and all the way to this day we see where people have dehumanized people to justify the behavior. Now we're seeing it even between political parties where somebody is sitting there just because you're part of this party uh, we're going to hurt you, we're going to kill you, we're going to dehumanize you. Both sides to a degree but one side in particular is really putting down uh, a lot of rhetoric of talking about physically hurting somebody. Uh, even in Christianity, we talked about the fact that the evangelicals and so forth talking about abortion with the with the the inciting people to go blow up abortion clinics and and then put uh, pregnant women or women who commit abo ador uh, abortion put them in jail. You know, it, it's just a lot of things that people would do in the name of their faith, their religion, and in our case, Christianity. So we need to fit there and say, do we need to operate and try to deal with things from the cardinal level or from the spiritual level? You know, God is the spirit in John 4, 24. God is the spirit, and those who worship him must worship his spirit in truth. And we've been called to preach the good news, not be militant. And we talked about the fact is that even uh, Christianity did not start off, nor is it nor are the teachings of Christ about violence. But when Rome took over and the church was accepted as the same religion, it became a banner also to be more militant. And that's where the crusade came in. And the viciousness and the, the, the terrible thing that was done in the crusade, look it up and read it for yourself. We, as believers, we, it's time for us to let our light shine and show people who are the real Christians. Meaning, and I'm talking about spiritual Christians. We have spiritual-minded Christians, not cardinal-minded. So real quick, I want to go ahead and read the, uh, the scripture I'm coming from, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and get into the study. So right here, like I said, two types of Christians, spiritual-minded and cardinal-minded, coming from Romans 8, 6. But let's go ahead into those scriptures. I want to read it real quick. Uh, it's like this. Romans 1, 8, I mean, Romans 8, 1, all the way to 8, 6, is what I like to read as, as the foundation where I'm coming from. He said, there therefore no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus, walking after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and it was weak to the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, listen y'all, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the date on the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Now, what I'm trying to say, if you look at what we just read, and you go back and read it for yourself, all the things from the lynching, all the things from the slave trade, all the things from the crusade, all the things leading them to the day. If you call yourself a Christian, if you use any cardinal weapons, any fleshly tools to try to make somebody be a Christian, to try to make somebody line up to be righteous, to make somebody to be what you think they're supposed to be as far as being holy, you can't do it because cardinal tools does not make you holy. Is only the spirit, the righteousness of Christ that's given to you as a gift. And if it's given to you as a gift, and the only thing for other people to do is receive the gift or continue to be what they are. But you are not cardinal. Remember that, amen? I hope you enjoyed the study. And listen to these introductions more than anything else because that's what we're trying to come to. Let's stop being cardinal Christians and let's stop being spiritual Christians. Amen? God bless you. God loves you. I will go ahead and make the, uh, the session available next, buy them up in uh, A, B, and C, and D. And also, I'll go ahead and make sure that you uh, get these out as soon as possible for you can digest them one day at a time or every other day. And also, remember this, subscribe. And, and make comments, too. I'll receive them. I, I mean, at least I'll, I'll read them. <laughs> God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey. Hey, welcome everybody. God bless you. Good morning. Um, hope everybody had a great weekend. And uh, this is the, uh, I guess, what, Sunday, the first Sunday of July after the 4th of day, you know, 4th of July holiday, you know. Uh, but anyway, I do want to sit there and say, God bless you. Hope you have a great day. The, the, this day, I have a topic that really been something they need to chew on for a little while. And, and I think it's time to chew on it. Here the fact is that uh, the role of us, those of us, I'm, I'm not, I'm, people that's joining, that's not a believer, I understand, got you. And, 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 and I appreciate you uh, listening. Uh, and I hope, I hope we learn something. But the, the but the body of Christ, uh, the the Christianity, uh, is something that need to be talked about and discussed. Because I know about I don't know about some of you, but a lot of cases when you're witnessing the people, some of them, when you're witnessing the people, uh, one of the things that comes up over and over again is the history of Christianity. Uh, and, and I think that's important because, you know, when you got the history of Christianity and when you're talking about the Bible, New and Old Testament, uh, that the Bible talks about the relationship between God first starting off with, with God and man, then starting off to Abraham, and then moved into the New Testament. It, which is said the Savior, which is Christ. And then the letters in the church 
uh, after the gospel, the four gospels, gives into the letters, um, and then all the way to Revelation. That's the formation of the church, of the ministries that, that profess to be part of the body of Christ, right? Uh, that's the history I'm talking about after the canonization, how it was we finally decided which books and letters goes into the Bible. And then the, the rest of it is us all the way to this present day of how we execute the doctrine and teaching of Yeshua, Jesus, our Savior, our Lord and Savior. You, you remember, it's, he's the head of the church. He's the head of the body of Christ. And we're supposed to be operating based on the leadership and following of the head of the church, not the head of ministry. Meaning, if a ministry, and I like Paul, it's kind of summarized, look what Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But don't follow me, basically, if I'm not following Christ. See, the foundation is built on Christ, not built on us, but built on Christ. And if we operate with that understanding, let me make sure I turn this down. If we operate with that understanding, then we're starting to do that which is, is, is is essential to the end of our faith, right? Because <laughs> we both have faith in God and we have faith in His Son. We live by the Holy Spirit. If we led by the Holy Spirit, if we're following Christ, if we're going by the will of God, then, then we should be our fruit, our actions, our behavior, should line up with the gospel because the gospel, the message of the gospel, and I think everybody agrees with it, whether you are a, a uh, African-American, uh, whether you are uh, European evangelical, whether you are somebody who don't even believe, it's the doctrine of the gospel that matters, not the, the doctrines of men. You know, even to, even Peter, we saw that time when Peter said that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Christ said, no one told you that except for what was revealed to you by my Father in heaven. And then when Christ started talking about uh, the fact that he would have to be crucified for the sins of the world. Not, not, not of the people based on color of skin, but based on the world. Peter tried to rebuke him concerning his death, his crucifixion that was coming. And, and, and Christ sat there and turned around and looked at Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, because you are mindful of the things of man, not of God. And that's the concern, <laughs> the history fact, that a lot of the things <laughs> of what we call Christianity has been mindful of the things of man, not of God. And that's what we have to talk about today. We can confront ourselves one way or another. We can sit there in front of a pulpit, in front of a group of you, and sit there and cheer for the mindful things of man instead of God, instead of the Word of God, instead of the doctrine of Christ, instead of the leader of the Holy Spirit. And we, gotta, we, we have to address this because ministries, listen ministries, whether you listen or not, people who go to these ministries, people who don't go to these ministries, when you are invited to those ministries, or when you have a discussion with people of those ministries, ask the question, 
are you, does your doctrine line up with Christ or line up with man? And that's what we're going to talk about today. There's two types of Christianity. One that obeys Christ, the teaching of Christ, and one that obeys the teaching of man. They are different. Because one does not follow the doctrine, but follows the approval of man. And that's he's been warning us through that the whole time. And we're going to talk about it. And what I what I rather you do is let's evaluate whether someone, whether you are following the doctrine and teaching of Christ or the doctrine and teaching of your ministries. And, and ministries need to ask that question. And I remember a lot of people, you know, I think, I remember one time before I was having a discussion with a, a, a person uh, about, you know, I like to talk about the uh, scriptures and so forth. And, and the person was so... I mean, I was tripping. I, I was sleeping. The person said, "Well, I gotta, I gotta ask my pastor about it." And you, and you said, "Okay, well, okay, <laughs> you, you go ask about your pastor about it." But you, you understand, we're talking about the scriptures, right? It, it's, I, I, I hope that you can talk about the scriptures yourself. You, you, if you need to be validated, or you need to, to you, you can't talk script. Any of you, any of us. If we can't sit there and talk scripture one on one, out in the in the in the, in the uh, your job and your home and your life, that you that you need to have to seek uh, guidance from your pastor about just talking the scriptures. Now, if you want to talk about something that that. Ops, you know, I guess actions uh, contrary to the scriptures or, or not contrary to scripture or, or something that is not, you know, like, for example, you, what do you, where you work at, right? Uh, what kind of clothes you wear? Uh, what do you, what do you can hate or, or not hate, right? Those are the type of things that you go and talk to your pastor about it because maybe he needs to give you guidance because you obviously don't get it yourself. But we're trying to get the word of God, man. You you got to be equipped yourself. You need to be equipped to talk about the word. And, and matter of fact, the only thing we talk about a lot of cases on this when we out there in the community is to talk about our revelations of the scriptures. And the revelations always need to be pointing back toward the scriptures, right? If, if a revelation you get, such as Peter got a revelation to rebuke Christ, Christ says, they get behind me because you're not, you're not mindful of things of, of uh, God, you're mindful of things of man. If I say I got to go, if this is his will, if it's his will, that I'd be crucified. See, Christ didn't crucify himself, right? The, the, the Roman soldiers and the, the Jewish leadership those are the ones who crucified him, right? Those are the ones that the, the, the Jewish leaders turned him over to the Romans so that the Romans can crucify him. Uh, that that's, that's what had to happen. And for Peter, I understand Peter saying, man, I, I'm trying, I love you, man. I don't want you to go through that. I understand Peter. <laughs> But I'm the only one that can go through it. I'm the only one that death matters in order for the salvation for the world. And when when I'm saying I'm talking about two types of Christians, I see sometimes where people are not mindful of things of the world. They're mindful of the things of the congregation. They're mindful of the things of of, of uh, their skin color. They're mindful of the things of where they came from. But they're not mindful of the things of Christ or the things of God and the will of God. And that's what we want to talk about today. All right. So first of all, let's talk about the title so that we can we can stay in line with what, we, what I'm trying to get to and build a case. The, the, the thing I'm talking about right here, two 
types of Christians. So I should have put I've been putting up in there. Two types of Christians, those who obey Christ and those who disobey Christ. Uh, matter of fact, I fixed the whole title up again on it. But the bottom line is two types of Christians. And matter of fact, I'm gonna fix that now. Let me sit there and get that squared away. I'm sitting there Englishly corrected. Uh, two types of Christians, first of all. Two types of Christians, those who obey Christ and those who disobey. Not an S in it. All right, fix that real quick. I want to make sure that was fixed. Uh, I was sitting there. I can, you know, I had a title. I changed the title this morning. I had a different title. I had two types of churches, you know. But in reality, it's not the it's not the ministry. It's not the body. It's not the church. It's the people. And and whether they're church leaders or whether they're congregation members, you all are ambassadors. All of us, all of us are ambassadors to Christ, right? If we're ambassadors to Christ, then we represent Him. As far as people are concerned, that's what you do. You're representing Him. And if you are representing Him, then you should represent Him based on the doctrine of the gospel, not the doctrine of ministries, not the doctrine of political parties. Not the doctrine of your family. Everything has to line up with the, the scriptures, right? So it said two types of Christians, those who obey Christ and those who disobey Christ. And, and, and the question is, what are you? Are you a follower of Christ? Are you a follower of the gospel and the doctrine of Christ? That, that's what we want to ask the question. Are you, you? Because that's something you have to assess yourself and you assess it based on the word of God, not based on a, your denomination. You can sit there, some denominations sit there and have more total control of you. But I'm telling you, you're supposed to have, be under total control of Christ. You're supposed to be led by the Holy Spirit. And and what we, we want you to, some of other believers, but y'all need to, some, everybody is some based on the doctrine of the gospel. If your doctrine, if your ministry, if your, your family position, if your political party position operates outside the gospel, you need to understand this. This is not just about how you walk this earth. This is about, this. we're talking about your soul. We're talking about our souls. Are you, please, you're supposed to go preach the gospel you boast of that, you know, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This, this is the basic foundation <clears throat> of what Christ came. What type of church are you? I want to sit there and invite you to listen to the study carefully. And I also want to invite you to look up the history of religion. And I'm talking about look at the atrocities of religion. Look at the atrocity of the Christian church. Look them up because there's a lot. And why I'm saying that, the Bible says that a tree is known by its fruit. What fruit are you bearing? That's what we want to discuss. And, and keep in mind, you can always change, revert back, repent and follow the will of God. So even if you have a history, bad things, you can always come back to the throne of grace because that's what the gospel is all about. So I want you to take time to listen to the study, analyze it for yourself, and ask what type of church are you? We got to the point where we actually used, went to the book of Revelation to the church of Laodicea and what that church was like. And the question is, are you like that church? But if you believe and you want to believe, follow his will. He gave you the, Lord, he gave you the Lord's commandment so you can follow his will daily. Amen. All right. God bless you. I see you. Don't forget to subscribe. And, and I will break these down into segments A, B, C, D, and whatever it takes to finish it up. But I just want you to analyze it. 
And like I said, I just want to put out there to you. If you decide that you don't want to believe Christ, if you decide that you don't believe in eternal life, that's a choice you make. And we respect your choice because you make that choice. All we all tell you is that everyone will give, every, look, my scripture said by faith. That's all I can go by faith in his word. Is that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So, you say now or say when you leave this world? That's up to you. God bless you, but I chose to do it now. Make that decision now. I encourage everybody else to make that decision now as well. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the segment, the study that we did this Sunday on the 9th of July. And say, look, yes, sure, Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen. God bless you. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.